it. Get in your shot. Movie. I like it. We always <laughs> wanted to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> you think of me, you'll be famous in a day. I don't know, I'm going to need you in here with me today. I'm going to be flexing in my sacks. Like, what sock do you put on first every time, Daniel? Do you put on first every time? I shuffle. Are you sure? Yeah. Think about it for the next week. I thought you were asking what fucking song I <laughs> Come ghosts in the phantom. Try to hit your line, but no answer. I shall hold you for ransom. Mm -hmm. I shall hold you for ransom. The GPS signal has been lost. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna be taking you guys through like a little day in the life slash show you the behind the scenes of my content style and workouts and more. Me and Daniel were talking about how like crazy busy my schedule has been lately. And yesterday, obviously, we drove down to Surrey, Surrey, British Columbia, to check out some gym equipment. And last night, like literally right before I was going to bed, I'm like, you know what? Let's just make tomorrow just as busy because why the fuck not? So we're doing a full content today. We're doing a full content day, content today content day today. First and foremost, we're gonna have Daniel vlogging all day. We're gonna be doing a photo shoot with Arnell. And then I've got a couple live streams, classes we gotta do. And then I'm gonna be filming short form videos with Nick later. We're gonna have Daniel film the entire thing. It's gonna be a good fucking day. I'm feeling caffeinated and ready to fucking go, dude. Yeah, dude. Always. Fucking 4 a.m. We got Arnell, then Daniel, and then later I'm getting Nick to film. This is how it is. Filming everything, no matter what. That drive was fucking useless. Yeah, I heard. It was hilarious. The guy, like, there's a different guy you made like that. Yeah. I don't know who that guy is. That's the dude who owns all the warehouses. They were fucking partnered or something. Okay. But the dude that we went and saw that was emailing you yeah. wasn't even fucking there. And he's the one who does all the new equipment. Oh. So he's just this fucking middleman. And the dude who owns the fucking warehouse with all the used shit is the one that we gave us a tour. We didn't even know we were coming. All these cameras are in his face. He's like, fuck's going on? And then he like drove us around. And at first they were like, yeah, so we got like some warehouses and stuff. And we're like, okay. Drove all the way there. And then we're like, hammer strength. And he's like, oh, I don't have any hammer strength shit. I'm like, lit. Perfect. Fucking great, dude. Newsflash, if you come to my gym and you don't put your weights away and I catch you, you will not have a good time. So guys, basically what I'm doing right now with my training is I'm doing a push pull legs and then obviously having boxing in. Now, today is kind of like a me day before I officially go into my new split because my coach sent it to me. So today we're gonna be doing like heavy, heavy fucking arms and shoulders. I'm gonna be mixing in a new warm up routine beforehand. As you guys saw, warming up my shoulders, warming up my core, getting some fucking ab work in because my goal all also is to like really fucking get my core a little bit more dense and like a lot of people they fuck around with like crazy body weight workouts and everything else that comes out of their abs but I just don't because the ab is the same as every other fucking muscle you have in your body if you don't add weight to it you're not gonna build up a dense core and it's one of the reasons why and I'm not even trying to be cocky but why I have a really good fucking core like when I step on stage I've done four shows I've got very dense abs and very intense insertions and it's because I add a lot of weight to my fucking training but yeah today's a me day before I have to go into my new program because uh, I asked for push pull legs because I technically need to rest more because I'm doing two hours of boxing a day, but I prefer to do a bro slit because I like my fucking arm days and shit. That's how it is. You know how it is. Fucking core is on fire right now, bro. What the fuck is going on, Danny? Oh, this beat sounds sick. Beat sounds dope as fuck. Never mind. It's fucking shit. What the fuck is this? This music's dog shit. So I've noticed with this machine, the higher I go, the more I can just lock my wrist in and not worry about me moving back anymore. You can still hear me fine. Forgot about that. I will win that, bro. I won't blink for the next five minutes. We got our posing room finished. This is like the first time that we're like seeing how it moves and how everything fits. Fucking triceps are like ridiculous. Arnold, I'm gonna need you in here with me today. I'm gonna be flexing in my sacks. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not a part of my job. I'm not so doing. It. Always, bro. Oh, yeah. Then if a song comes on that I fucking hate, I turn it off, and I'm like, nope, nope. not today, bro. <laughs> I refuse to become the small, skinny boxer, bro. Everybody keeps saying that muscles a problem in boxing, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. There's no fucking way I'm gonna let myself get skinny like that. Down, they just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Dink down, they just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Alright, y'all, so we thought we'd actually try out the posing room because we finally have it done. Right now I weigh 168 pounds. The goal for boxing, which we have a fight actually coming up in like six to eight weeks here, which I'll talk to you guys in a bit, would be to around 160 to 165, but I just refuse to fucking lose my muscle mass. I fucking, I'm just not playing that game. So I'll show you guys where we're currently sitting. We'll get into it. Again, when I show you guys these physique updates, I just like to show you basically my regular poses that I send my coach for our fucking physique check-in breakdown. So I'll just run through it right quick. I'll show you guys where we're at. All right, I'll show you the back. Honestly, feeling very good right now. A little side tricep shit. Whew. So I'm probably sitting at like 15 to 20% body fat, maybe a little bit more, but feeling very good. Yeah, especially for not trying to cut size at all. So feeling very good. This is the new style for boxing. I'm starting to walk out there like this. Watch my stomach up. So right now what I'm getting Cole to do is just, I call this a, a go to walk. Basically what he's doing is, is he's walking with his head over foot right now. And then we're just adding punches into it, right? Where he could throw crosses, hooks, uppercuts, all that shit, yeah. And what I really wanna see out of his hips is his hips rotating. And that's gonna lead his shoulders rotating side to side. So his head goes over his foot. And this just helps his body kinda get loose and move the right way for when we start to box. It's just an easy warm up to do. And this one, this is just our simple high knees. Just like a basic dynamic warm up. But all I get him to do to switch it a little bit is to rotate more, rotate his upper body. So again, his head is over foot. See, when he first started this too, he was super tight where this one looked like the last one where it didn't look like any difference. Now go butt kicks. Right, and most of this stuff too, like you would do this to warm up in other sports, football, baseball, all that stuff. Let's go, uh, go with your slides. Yeah, and really open it up and still stop the feet coming together. And this is kind of getting us closer to some boxing footwork, right? Doing some lateral shuffling. So again, showing you guys like a day in the life of like what I do every single day right now. Again, it's six in the morning. I've already been up for three hours. We smashed a full workout and a photo shoot. My entire morning routine. I'll pop the morning routine up on the screen for you guys because honestly, I just don't feel like fucking saying it all right now. And then usually we do two hours of boxing like you guys are about to see right now. And then we go on to the rest of my content day, business day, invoice day. Fucking, it's gonna be insane. <laughs> There's certain things that we do every day, like we string up the right glove every day. So if we pick up the left glove first, we gotta put it back down. It's like I didn't think of that until Cole was like, here, place this one first. And then I was like, nope, that's, that's wrong. Just a weird thing. Like, what sock do you put on first every time, Daniel? You ever think about that? What sock you put on first every time? I shuffle. Are you sure? Yeah. Think about it for the next week. I thought I shuffled too, and then I really thought about it. I put the left one on every single time. I put you guys in the fucking sock. <laughs> <laughs> shuffle. Touche, shuffle. shuffle, yeah. I don't know, what are you talking about, bro? That's funny. It's a weird thing to say, but I'm like half ambidextrous. Like I can do most things just as well on my left hand as I can on my right. But that's because I was born left-handed. But in Portuguese culture, the left hand means that you're the son of the devil. So my grandma beat it out of me. No devils here. <laughs> One of the things too I'm looking for with Cole is like, it's not that can he do it on the mitts, it's can he do it in shadow boxing and how does it look? And can he pull it out on his own? Like I give him the task or the combo or the, the technique to do, but can he pull it out on his own while he's moving around? So that's what we're gonna do next. You're gonna crawl around and then pull out that whole sequence that we did. And we're gonna see how it comes out now 
on your own without me there. There we go. Yeah, run right away. That's what I'm looking for. Is, does it look the same? Can he do it just from his imagination? Because that's what it's going to be when he's sparring or he's fighting, is that he has to be the one that's in control. I might give him the call, fake overhand gazelle setup or whatever we call it, but he has to be able to pull it out of his ass on the right timing while he's close enough to his opponent. Good. Yeah, because he's in there first. He has to make the right call, right? I'm like the, he's like Batman and I'm like Alfred in the chair. Daniel could be Robin. <gasps> section of my app. If you guys want me to talk about relationships, fitness, nutrition, training, habits, rituals, whatever, make sure you comment it or even make a post in the Facebook group in the first place. Because if you guys don't ask for it, I can't create it. If you don't talk about it, I don't know what you're struggling with and what you actually want. So if you are live with me right now, hashtag I'm here. If you are watching the replay, make sure you hashtag replay. Uh, what is your nightly routine to decompress? Also, I'm really trying to work on having a positive mindset in my current job. I work for the public and help people with various backgrounds, including some disabilities or addictions. Touche, that's very her job. Let's touch on both of these. First and foremost, I'll deal with the nighttime routine. My nighttime routine to decompress is not spiritual. It's not hippy dippy. It's not anything special. It's actually very simple. I get off my fucking phone as much as I can. All right. Sometimes I'm still bad with it, but I get off my phone around 6 to 7 p.m. I stop checking it. I stop doing work. I stop trying to answer people, answer calls, answer DMs. That's one of my main things that I focus on. But then I also go into a very simple breakdown that we do. 7 p.m. is little baby boy's Cade's bedtime. So we get his milk ready. Julia reads him a book after he changes him. I come in and brush his teeth. It's like my fucking favorite thing right now. We'd like to sing a little song and I fucking brush the four teeth that he fucking has or six teeth that he has. And then we slowly put him to bed. After he's done in bed, me and Julia make tea. We go down to our little movie theater in our house and we watch a couple episodes of Friends. That's one thing that we're rewatching right now ever since we heard of Matthew Perry. Sad as fuck. My nighttime routine isn't like do all these super crazy in-depth things in order to change your life. I did that for a very long time and it did work for me. I'm not knocking it and I'll probably make some of you guys do that shit because a lot of you guys don't understand how to control your mind. But I've done so much and I've been so diligent with my habits and rituals and my fitness and my mindset for so long that I don't really need a nighttime routine to decompress. Once it's like 7 to 8.30 p.m., guys, I'm fucking exhausted, all right? Like I'm beat. If I sit down on the couch for half an hour, I'm most likely gonna fall asleep. So I don't need a nighttime routine to exhaust myself or decompress myself, okay? So what I would suggest for you, Gail, is mind dump if you feel like you're still overwhelmed. Get a piece of paper and just dump all the good and bad shit that happened on a daily basis or that day. Dump all the bad shit, crumple it up, throw it in the garbage, then dump all the good shit on a new piece of paper. Read that three times. All right, then I would have a sound machine or a nighttime soundscape that I would listen to when I fall asleep. That's question number one. Question number two, you said, I'm really trying to work on my mindset. I'm just gonna hammer through this. If anybody wants to read this, you can go back and read it afterwards. But basically, do you have any suggestions on how to handle difficult or stressful situations? Understand that you are not in control of them, okay? That's it. Understand that you aren't in control of them. I utilized our situation recently. We went to Tent City and we gave away eight wardrobe boxes to three different homeless shelters in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. I give away $2,000 worth of my clothing brand's products and we gave around, gave around like $700 to $800 in pizza. So it was like 40 to 50 pizzas, not to mention some gloves and hot ones and way more. Now, when we went down there, you guys can actually watch the vlog on my YouTube if you'd like to go check it out. When we went down there, it was heavy. There was a lot of like dark shit going on there. And there's a lot of people that are fucking really struggling. Individuals addicted to meth, crack, everything else above the sun, actual families living in tents. I didn't realize that it was so bad there that the city just assigned garbage cans to fucking the street of Tent City. Like it's so bad that the city's like, oh, this is just how it is. Let's just assign garbage cans so we can clean up the waste and we'll just leave all these people here. We'll also assign a security guard. So if anybody dies, we'll just come pick them up. All right, it's actually fucked. Unfortunately, all right, rest 
in peace. There was an individual that passed away that Daniel actually used to know. And then we had a very deep, good conversation with when we were there that was actually wearing one of the sweatsuits. They found him the next day, OD'd in one of the fucking sweatsuits that we gave him. That was, uh, that was some heavy shit. All right, that was some heavy shit. Now, I just looked at it the way that it was. I can't control that. I can only do what I can do. We tried our best to give back as much as we can. And I just focused on what I could control. Because if I focus in on all of that dark shit, all of the horrible shit that's happening in the world, I'm going to become a very negative, pessimistic person. Because let's be real, guys, like there is a lot of fucking negative shit happening in the world. And like, I'm not trying to downplay anybody's struggle, but let's also zoom out for a minute. Let's look at the people that are in Tent City in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. Do you think their lives are as bad as some of these third world countries that don't even have drinkable water? Absolutely not. Like, there's always another stage of suffering in our world. So, the way that I look at it is you just gotta, you could do what you can, number one, and only focus on what you can control. Because if you guys try to embody everything and take on everybody's stress, you're just not gonna get anywhere. So that is actually a live stream that I do every single Friday in my Wolves Den community. If you guys are curious about what that is, there is a link in the comments below. Long story short, obviously I am a gym owner, I am a business coach for personal trainers, but I am also a fitness coach and mindset coach for individuals looking to transform their lives. I own an app called the Wolves Den. I'll pop it up on the screen right here. You'd actually find it in the App Store through Apple and Android. Now I will say, if you guys don't come to me and you just wanna buy the app online, it's more expensive, but if you come through me, it's only $97 a month. That is less than $5 a day, and you get 100% customized nutrition, 100% custom training, mindset videos for me in a section called Bulletproof Mentality, and a Facebook group where you get to hear me deliver lessons, answer questions, and more, a seven-figure CEO before the age of 30, pour value into you. So if you're struggling right now, click the fucking link in the description and join. It's less than $5 a day. If you buy Starbucks every day, you can join my fucking app. You don't have $97, don't fucking DM me because it's just, you're just not willing to invest in yourself and I'm not willing to talk to you. Next, I got a meeting with my assistant. For everybody who is currently looking right now, this is my executive assistant, Michelle. Yeah, that's Daniel. Hey. Um, we call her Michelle Boss Lady. She is in my WhatsApp as Michelle Boss Lady. She's the one who does all my emails, my scheduling, my appointments, my calendar. She's the boss of me now. And the goal is to get to a point where if you want to talk to me, you have to talk to Michelle first. That's literally how it is. And that's just how, that's the breakdown. It's gonna be perfect. When I saw you, it's nice to meet you. No my old girl salty. She just wanna be you. I'm a dog, no Montes. I don't wanna leave you. Doggy singing, peace. All right, guys. So that is basically how my morning goes. Usually every morning. Now, I usually film a podcast. We're going to actually be filming more podcasts because Brian is, uh, Brian, fuck my life. Daniel's holding me more accountable to it. I apologize for that extremely fucking bad burn I just gave today. you. But on Fridays, I gotta do the Open Wolves q and A. I've this is something I've committed to 100%. So already today, up at 3 a.m., entire morning routine done, gym, um, checked my fucking Facebook group, two hours of boxing, IG story, live stream the Wolves Den, meeting with my assistant. I'm now gonna go eat a little bit of food because I'm fucking starving and it's 10 a.m. And then we're gonna go into the, my Friday ritual, which is invoice and uh, email overview. So all the invoices, the different things that come for content creation and business and contracts and all that other shit. My assistant schedules into my calendar, as you guys can see right here from the green and blue blocks. I then go over them, make sure they're all good to go, review any contracts I need to hit. At 12 p.m. we got a masterclass and we'll walk through all that, but I'm not gonna tell you everything that we're doing. Then in this video, you guys saw me start the video with Daniel, all right, when it came down to vlogging, all right, do a photo shoot while we were also vlogging, and you're gonna see me do short form reels today with Nick because he's gonna be coming through, because my goal in this video is not only give you a day in the life, but also show you what I do for content creation and why I'm able to create anywhere from 150 to 300 videos on a monthly basis, and why I'm separating myself from every other individual in the market. So guys, what we're doing right now is we're doing a free masterclass for our coaching community. We currently have Dane McDonald, who is the CEO of Clean Health. They're actually the individuals that are going to be hosting me for Clean Health Live when we go down to Australia in April. Surprise, we're doing a crazy event. And it's gonna be fucking amazing. So he's dropping a bomb. And it's actually created a bunch of FOMO because the Zoom room got locked at 100 people. So there's only 100 people that can join. There's fucking hundreds of posts being like, what the fuck, why can't I get in here right now? And he's dropping bombs right now. First thing you can see we have the 100 here. 
All these people just chilling here, listening, yeah, taking notes. Presence is the 2024 version of being world fucking class and being present. Fuck, that's good, isn't it, man? That's so fucking good. Be presence, like be presence, which I'll get to. But first thing is your thoughts, right? Now, obviously your thoughts trigger emotions. We know that our emotions then trigger behaviors, i.e. I feel shit, I'm tired. That triggers emotion of pity. I then fucking stay in bed and don't get out of bed at 3.45 a.m. So that's a behavior that I've triggered. My experience now is that I'm in bed whilst Dane and Cole and Brian are out there fucking winning. Those experiences then trigger reactions, right? Because when you experience something in life, you have a reaction to it again. So like your first trigger is an emotion. How you react to that from a behavior standpoint will trigger the type of experience that you feel. But then once you're in that experience, you have a reaction to that experience. Now that reaction emits a frequency. So when you're in an experience, you can choose to be great. You know what? Everyone just fucking close their eyes for a second. Close your eyes. Like just sit here and commit to presence. Commit to being fucking grateful for the fact that all of us are on this call right now from around the world. Because like, it's a fucking joy. Yeah. Can you feel that? Exactly. I mean, I got goosebumps coming down my legs. That's what happens when you bring a bunch of like-minded human beings together, emitting a certain frequency, a certain mindset, a certain energy. This is what you get. All right, y'all. So we just finished a two hour masterclass with our partners down at Clean Health. Honestly, Dane over delivered in so many fucking ways today. He was hilarious, man. Talking about some of the funniest shit I've ever heard, killing it across the fucking board obviously you guys saw a couple clips of the zoom call if you guys like that style by the way let me know in the comment section because we could be doing that all the fucking time we do a billion zoom calls on a weekly basis now again today was about like day in the life of a busy entrepreneur but also day in the life of like what the fuck i do for content so there's a couple frameworks that i want to walk you guys through right now there's a reason why i batch the way that i do you see as a busy entrepreneur as a fucking entrepreneur running two seven figure businesses as a new fucking father, a husband, and whatever the fuck else you want to classify me as. I'm a busy dude. Nick, what are you doing with the door, bro? <laughs> Holy shit. You're, do you're doing that on purpose while you're that fucking filming. <laughs> you like the double XL? Perfect. By the way, go buy Amrock Aesthetic merch. Uh, link in the description. So as a busy person, it's very hard for me to sit down and just do something individual on the drop of a dime. So what I do is I like to plan out my content pretty meticulously. Again, I'm not gonna walk you guys through like individual scripting and stuff today because me and Daniel actually have a video coming out about that. It's the Elite Mansion Mastermind video. By the time you guys see this, that one will already be posted. So we'll link it above and in the description below. But that one is actually a full day where I explain my entire content creation process and you're seeing it in live time right now because there's a couple of different things that I think about. Number one, this day in the life vlog that we are doing, this can not only be utilized for vlogging later on, but it's gonna be utilized for, for B-roll, it's gonna be utilized for spam reels, connection reels, in-depth reels with a bunch of different angles and workout footage and more, not to mention all the Motiversity content, motivational videos we create in the future. On top of that, I batched and made sure that we have it stacked and I brought Arnell to take in photos at the same time that I was vlogging my workout this morning because then this way we have two styles of content right away. And then again, same thing, we're bringing Nick in to do a bunch of talking videos. I think if I'm not mistaken, I have 17 in-depth full script ready. And then Daniel actually has a quote unquote speed round idea breakdown for me with 21 ideas in our notes. So we're gonna get an average of anywhere from 40 to 55 videos today based off of the fact that I know we'll get more because I always get fired up and then Daniel will say something or Nick will say something and it'll make me fucking think more and I'll just start banging them out. But beforehand, your boy needs some caffeine. So I'm gonna go fucking raid Brian's house and get a fucking energy drink because I was not expecting that fucking masterclass the last two hours. I literally was like, oh, an hour will be good to go. Bang, 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 perfect, sounds good. I'm fucking starving right now. All right. Yeah. Oh, got you got it, bro. Yo, buy my shit, dog. Listen, buy my shit. I'm not good at asking. I might, I might not watch his YouTube videos, but I buy his shit. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not good at asking. I'm asking you now. Buy my shit, okay? Look how cute this little boy looks right now. He looks like a, like a man. That's what I was right? saying. Right? I was like, you're wearing he normal He looks more grown up today with, with normal clothes. Look at this video. Apparently he walked from the couch to the stroller. Oh. He did. And, and then turned around video. and came back. Oh my God. Oh. Crazy. But he went all the way over there first. And then by the time I could get it, like, going. He's That's straight so walking. cool. Oh, my gosh. Funny, too. Funny story that uh, I don't know if Julia wants me to say, but I'm going to say it anyways. What? She said that she's screwed now. 
she was taking a poop oh, yeah. this morning yes, and did. had him in the washroom with her because sometimes she has to do that. Yeah. And he just stood up, opened the door, and walked out. And, oh. and she's like, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so when it comes down to this, guys, long story short, we're just trying to make sure that the audio and everything sounds good. Where's the lap? Out there. Yeah. Because when it comes down to video creation and everything that we want to do, um, like audio is the most important part. Like, even if the video looks like shit and it's dark or whatever, like like obviously you wouldn't want to film in front of a video of a window like we are right now with it behind my head or whatever. It doesn't matter. If the audio is good, then we're pretty much fucking fine and we're good to go. Yeah. So that's why we always either have a lab on or we'll utilize a high class shotgun mic like this if there's no background noise and we're just chilling in the fucking house. Like, would you rather watch a video with shitty audio and great video, or would you rather watch a video with a black screen and really good audio? Exactly. <laughs> black screen. Yeah. I think so. So basically, guys, again, just a little insight into how I do my content creation process. I've spent around two hours today coming up with the ideas I talked about before we actually sat down. And then what I look at is I just look at the paragraph that I want to see, all right? Paragraph that I want to say, concept that I would like to talk about. Sometimes I'll actually read the entire paragraph verbatim because I was like, that was a fucking banger when I spat it in my mouth the first time. Um, or sometimes I'll just look at the first line and I'm like, you know what? I don't like what I wrote, so let me just go off the dome. I've reached a point in my content career that I don't really need a lot of prompts. I don't really need a lot of scripting. I don't really need a lot of hand holding. You can basically give me any subject and I'll fucking bang it out of the park right away because I'm just used to doing this shit on a continual basis. One, check two, check one, check two. That sounds great, actually. You are not your past. You're you. Stop insisting you're the individual you used to be, or eventually... Actually, let's stop that one. Just delete that one. You are not your past. You're you. Stop insisting you're the individual you used to be. Unless... You want to get stuck there and remain that person forever. So basically when it comes down to the things that I'm talking about, I'll speak about subjects that I hear basically anybody say, Julia, Daniel, Nick, Brian, any of my other friends, our clients, other people on social media, like that script, obviously the first line initially, you are not your past, you're you. That's a Joe Rogan line that I heard. And then the rest of it was me actually having a conversation with one of our clients where I was like, why are you insisting that you're the individual that you used to be? Like, why are you always bringing up the past, your addictions, your problems, your struggles, your anxiety, your depression? Like, you're not that motherfucker anymore. So why are you consistently insisting you are them? And they were just, they didn't have an answer because it was a dumb concept. They realized that they should stop fucking doing that. I was like, you know what, I'm going to film a video on it. Now, the reason why I'm just straight to the point when it comes down to shorts, reels, TikToks is because, yes, you can post nine minute TikToks right now but the odds that an individual is actually going to listen to that entire video is fucking not gonna happen it's it's incredibly rare so I just bang out fucking anywhere from nine to sixty second clips on things that I want to talk about and then I'll expand on a podcast later on most likely cut out the fucking vices the drugs the smoking the vaping the drinking none of that shit is serving you you got to get it out of your life. You need to stop leaning into it because if you truly want to level yourself up, if you truly want to reach the ultimate version of yourself, then you need to work on yourself in a clear fucking state. This is one of the funny things, guys, too, is because people see my energy when it comes down to the videos and they're like, there's no way Cole's like that in real life. They're like, there's no way he actually speaks like that because then you'll see me in other videos and I'm like this, monotone, way more fucking relaxed, but, and I'll just let them say it, when I get passionate, am I that guy? 100%. Yeah. You are oh. that guy. You are that guy. Yeah, it's literally, <laughs> I like, I can't turn it off. Like, I'll be like super relaxed. And then it's as soon as the it's like, anything triggers me, anything excites like fucking me. Yesterday when when we couldn't pick up the equipment because they didn't have the fucking yeah. hammer strength, yeah, bro, you turned into that guy. That's, that's right? it's it's <laughs> instantaneous, man. I just can't fuck it. Like I'm like that. I'm 100% authentically myself. Yeah. As soon as there's passion that erupts in my fucking soul, it just comes out turbo aggressive, like super intense, and I relax again. And I'm like that's just who I am, and it's one of the reasons why I've been able to grow across every social media platform, like. So many of you guys struggle to grow on social media because you try to be something that you fucking aren't. You're just not yourself. I just show up as me, 100% authentically me. And I don't worry about what anybody fucking thinks. And if you don't think this is me, I don't care. Because 
I don't give a shit. I'm not trying to join your fucking box. Be you. 100% authentically you and everything will change. Y'all don't fucking get it. Today's pain is tomorrow's power. You guys think your trauma and past is a crush, when in reality, it is the exact thing that will skyrocket your fucking success if you embrace it. I you like know. how he just gets it all in one go. Yeah. Saves the cutting. It's impressive. Yeah. Huh. I never let none of you close to me. I'm in the cut like I'm supposed to be. The ones that betrayed me had love for me. But so they told me. Getting your shot. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Today we've done probably around five hours of shooting so far with you, Daniel. We've done an hour photo shoot in the gym, so we'll have photos for the next little bit here. We just did around an hour to an hour and 10 minutes of filming with Nick. We could have kept going and honestly pushed it, but I'm fucking happy with what we have. And I'm uh, excited about the speed round ones because those went better than I thought they were going to. And we filmed 35 videos there. So that means we have another month and a bit of TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and everything else. That is my content creation process. And this is why I set the fucking standard around here. Okay? And I'll be cocky about that a little bit. I found a very creative flow because with everything that we did today, not only do we have the 35 videos that we just filmed with Nick, but with all of the footage that we have, including me speaking to the camera and like motivating you guys today, I know Daniel will probably make anywhere from, like, usually it's like three a week, three to five a week from all the fucking footage we film. So it's gonna be insane. Like we probably created anywhere from 35 baseline videos all the way up to 60 with all the fucking new reels, motivational stuff, the gym content, the workout content, and more. That's how we play. So now I'm just uploading the replay to the communities. So the replay is going up in the Change Eyes Academy right now. And I'm actually calling out some of my fitness clients as well in the meantime, because I noticed some individuals aren't tracking their weight of their photos. So instead of just letting them do what they want to do, I'm actually like copying and pasting their name, their updates, their photos, like what they haven't done. And I'm putting in the group for everybody to see because I'm a believer in 100% accountability. As you can see here, it literally says their name and then what they haven't been doing. Like fucking boom, you thought you could hide. I literally see what the fuck you're doing and you know, so does everybody else because I'm a fucking believer in accountability. The masterclass went absolutely amazing and you guys saw us film a total of like 35 plus the two extra and the breakdowns 39 reels so far a five hour vlog that daniel's going to be compiling down for you guys when you watch this and probably took over 100 photos based off of how i know our now works so that's a mix between a full day in the life of me all right and the content creation process now don't get me wrong guys it's actually only 4 p.m I've got a lot more that I need to do. I gotta check out a couple invoices, a couple contracts that I need to move through based on my app software and my Motiversity contract. And then me and Julia are gonna be doing some stuff later, but I don't want Daniel to have to film all of that shit. Not to mention, I don't want this vlog to be 70 minutes fucking long. So <laughs> that'll be enough. We're gonna shut it down there. If you guys got value from this episode, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what you wanna see next. If you actually want a tutorial individually walking you guys through the content creation process, tell me. All right, I know we're putting out a lot in the future here already, but I wanna make sure that we're giving you guys things that you can actively use. Things that you can kinda of implement into your own fucking life. I love y'all, subscribe, like, peace. You thought the vlog was over. But I got a snack in my hand and a bunch of Amarok orders because I'm going to fucking send some out right now. I'm being serious. Link in the description. Get into the app. If you need help with your fitness or your mindset, get some clothing. If you look busted right now and you don't have any nice clothing, or you're struggling with your business, hit me up. I got you.